Okay, okay, number 223. It says seed mixture X is 40% ryegrass and 60% bluegrass. And mixture Y is 25% ryegrass and 75% fescue. If a mixture of X and Y contains 30% ryegrass, what percent of the weight of the mixture is X? Oh, so they only really care about ryegrass. We can ignore the bluegrass and the fescue. That's just here to overly complicate the problem. Okay, 40% ryegrass, 25% ryegrass. We turned it into a mixture. That means we had 40% of mixture X plus 25% of mixture Y. Added that together and we got we got 30% of a new mixture, which was X plus Y. Okay. Hmm. 2.4X plus 0.25Y equals, so multiply and get 0.3X plus 0.3Y. Move that over. Move that over. 0.1X equals 0 0.05 y x equals 0.5 y hmm so now we know that at least well, at least we know the the ratio between the two mixtures but the original question is asking what percent of the weight of the mixture is x so we are looking for x over x plus y x plus y is the mixture we're looking for x, but we're looking for a percentage, so we're, we're going to multiply that by 100. And that is what we're going to be looking for. So how do we... Ooh, okay. So how do we figure that out? Well, we plug in 0.5y everywhere that we see x. So 0.5y times 100 over 0.5y plus y. That equals hmm, 1.5y. Up here, that's going to be 50y. Cancel out the y's. 1.5 and 50. Move the decimal point over 1. Bring that up. And 15 goes into 50 uh, three times, I believe, 45, that gets you another 50. Okay, so it's going to be 33, and it's going to keep going. So is that one of the answer choices? 223, 33. Ah, B. B says 33 and a third percent. And that's the same as 33.3333333. B. B is going to be your answer. Moving on to 224. If n is a positive integer, then n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 is, and they give us a, b, c, d, and e. a says if, uh, no, not if, it says even. So n is, so this thing is even if only, only when n is even. B says even only when n is odd. The only uh, makes a big difference here. Odd whenever n is odd. D says divisible by 3 when n is odd. And finally, E says divisible by 4 when, whenever n is even. Huh. This question is clearly testing your number properties because 
n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 is a fancy way of saying three numbers that are consecutive. They tell us that n is positive integer. So basically, three, conse three consecutive integers. What do we know about three consecutive integers? Well, we know that when there are three of them, either one of them will be even or two of them will be even. So no matter what, when you multiply all of them together, it's going to be even. No matter what, if n is odd or even, this will always be even. So that eliminates a, because a says even only when n is even. No, because n can be odd and it, can, and it will still be even. And by that same logic, b is also out. c says odd whenever n is odd. But like I just said, it, this will always be even. Right? So what that means is c also can never be true. It can just never be odd. d says divisible by 3 when n is odd. Is that true? Well, if n was odd, let's... What if n was... What if n was uh, 7? 7, 8, 9. Uh, that would be 72 times 7. 504. Is that divisible by 3? Let's find out. 20, 6, 18, 24. That is 168 divisible by 3 when n is odd. Hmm. Let's try some other numbers. What if n was 5? 5, 6, 7. 42, 5, 21, 210. That's definitely divisible by 3. So d could be the right answer. Let's move on to E and see what E tells us. E says divisible by 4 whenever n is even. Ah, I see what happened. So, okay, so with E it says divisible by 4 whenever n is even. If n was even, 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, it's 12 times 2, yeah, that's definitely divisible by 4, so e might also be the right answer. Let me go back to the question again. So the question, let's see if I made a mistake somewhere, writing down these statements. e, divisible by 4 whenever n is even. Or e. d says divisible by 3 when n is... No, b says divisible by 3 only when n is odd. So this is what I missed. Only. These little words can have a huge impact, because right now, the way I wrote it before, D and E were both true. But is it true that it's divisible by 3 only when N is odd? What if, uh, what if we had an even number? Would it still be divisible by 3? Let's test this out. If we had an even number, let's say 2, you'd have 2, 3, 4, 12, 24, that is definitely divisible by 3. So the statement that uh, that this is only divisible by 3, uh, or it's divisible by 3 only when n is odd, is actually not correct. So that leaves us with only e. 2, 25. Uh, 2, 25 has a... Pipe. So there's a straight pipe. I'll draw the pipe. That is one yard in length and it was marked off in fourths. So cut into fourths, like so. And it was also cut into thirds. So one here and one here. So that's a third, and that's two-thirds. They're saying if the pipe was... Okay, if they were then cut into separate pieces at each of the markings, what, uh, which of the following gives all of the different lengths of the pieces in fractions of that yard? So what that means is we are going to be looking for this length, this length, and this length. 
if we can figure out what these three lengths are, then we can find the answer. Okay, yes, fairly straightforward. The reason why we don't care about these is because this was cut right down in the middle, so this is a mirror image of what's on the left. So let's ignore all this. How do we find this length? We already know it. It's a fourth of that, uh, of that one yard, so it's a fourth of the yard. How do we find this length here? Well, it's going to be a third of the yard minus a fourth. So that's going to be 12, 1 over 12. And how do we find this length? Well, this length is going to be a third, no, a half minus a third. That is going to be 6, 1 over 6. And if we look in the answer choices, E is our answer choice because E says 1 over 12, 1 over 6, and 1 over 3. 226 says if 0 0.0015 times 10 to the M is over 0 0.03, times 10 to the k, and that equaled 5 times 10 to the 7th, then m minus k is what? Okay, first thing we'd want to do here is, well, you know, this is interesting. There's a 3 and a 15. Right away I'm thinking we must divide this somehow to get a 5. It must be that we're going to try to make this side of the equation equal to this side of the equation, or make them as similar as possible and then figure out what m and k are. So how do we how do we ensure that we get a 5 here? Well, let's move the decimal points. Let's do it on top first. If we move the decimal point over 4 times, we get 15 times 10 to the m minus 4, because we're adding, uh, or we're, we're taking away uh, 4, or uh, tens, right? And the bottom, if we move over the decimal point twice, we get 3 times 10 to the k minus 2. That equals 5 times 10 to the m minus 4 minus k plus 2. That equals 5 times 10 to the... Uh, m minus k minus 2. And we know from the original equation that that equals 5 times 10 to the 7. So everything else here is identical. The only thing that isn't are the exponents. So we can set them equal to each other. Equals 7. Move that over and we get m minus k equals 9. And remember that that's what we were solving for, m minus k. So that gave us uh, 9. And 9 is going to be answer A. Okay, looks like we are almost done with this entire section. So join me in the final video and let's wrap this thing up.